<laughs> we are here finally. This is the trip that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. But because of the winds, uh, it has been stopping us. We do have some high winds right now and the surf is doing its thing. It's kind of, eh, it's out of whack right now. But check this out. Look who I am with right here. This guy has been somebody that I was watching when I first got into kayak fishing. Daniel, what's up, brother? Hey, how you doing, Mark? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, bro. Finally. I used to watch Daniel back in like the 2009, 2010 time frame, And I said, I want to do this. I want to do what it is that he was doing back in the day. And today is the day. So myself, Nick, RX Angler, DFAMS, AKA Living Waters, we're all going to try to make a go at getting through this washing machine. But once we do, we should be golden. Hey Mark, thanks for having me on your show, bro. I really appreciate it and yeah. uh, I'm honored. All right, bro, thanks. Good to meet you. No problem. Check it out, here's the rig. Ice bag in case we catch anything. I normally don't carry an anchor, but for the offshore stuff, I do have that on hand. I got the anchor buoy in case I got to disconnect so that we don't uh, tangle up with our fish inside the anchor line. And uh, all the reels are off. I'm gonna have to lay these rods down going through the surf. I broke one the last time I went out to pins and I don't want to do that again. Aside of that, it's the normal setup. Got plenty of batteries. Got the radio for safety. Uh, I almost forgot my knife, so I got to go get that out of the truck. But we're set up. Wish us luck going through the surf. It shouldn't be anything. The, the breakers don't look too bad at all. We're going to get wet, so there's no doubt about that. But we're going to have fun as well. Protection, Lord God. We ask for safety in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. with the audio but getting through that surf was a little bit more than what I thought it was gonna be we're out here past the breakers just got to wait for Daniel to come meet us up over here and we'll begin the little caravan all the way out to the oil rigs I want y'all to pay particular attention to the bow of the kayak as I'm rolling through these swells. Uh, let's freeze frame it really quick. So I need y'all to know that I am an, a Hobie lover. I have been fishing from an Outback since 2012 and I absolutely love this 2019 one. Uh, however, I feel that I owe it to my audience that is possibly going to buy one of these kayaks um, to know what I experience out here. Now this fish bag that you see up there on the bow. It's a Hobie medium sized one. It's carrying 20 pounds of ice and uh, it's not because of that bag weighing the bow down that I'm experiencing uh, the handling and these types of conditions and water going into the hull of the kayak. Later on in the video you'll see that I actually transferred the bag over to Daniel's kayak and I still had the same thing happening to me. Right here at this point in time, I started experiencing a loss of control uh, with the kayak being unresponsive and it started leaning to the right. 
I didn't understand what it was that was actually happening, but then kind of figured that I must have taken on uh, quite a bit of water. So eventually I slowed down my pedaling pace and looked down below to find uh, a lot of water. Dude, I have got to be waterlogged big time. I want to say I had maybe about two inches worth of water. Here we go, move that out of the way, and boom, to my surprise, I'm like, oh my gosh. That water, what it was doing as a swell hit me from the left-hand side and pushed me to the right, the water basically shifted its weight, and that's why I was leaning towards the right. Kind of scared me, but thank goodness I made a call to Daniel, and he had a bilge Hey, problem. Daniel, you there? I'm pretty waterlogged and I'm gonna need that bilge pump quick. Okay, everybody. All right, look, check it out. There is the rig and there is another rig about a mile away. Let me, let me be the first to say I have absolutely no business being out here right now. Uh, way too risky. It's not because of the outback. It is because of the conditions. The kayak does not do well in these swells. So I'm taking water over the bow constantly. Uh, without this bilge pump, it she would be waterlogged. Uh, on the way out here, I had to stop, what was it, like three times to bilge the water out. Sorry to talk so long, but a lot of y'all have asked me, hey, how does it handle offshore? Well, as long as it's smooth, then you're gonna be fine. Uh, High Island, that was fine. I mean, we had nice rolling swells, but this right here is very unpredictable. And the swells, they're, they're monstrous, they're big. They're big for this kayak. If I was in the older Outback, I would probably be able to handle this a lot better. Being that it sits a little bit lower to the water, which I absolutely love for inshore fishing, not out here because the swells go over. Keeping my batteries and everything uh, electrical dry is going to be tough. Okay, I talked long enough. Since we're out here, I have to try to make the best of it and hopefully catch some fish. If not, this is going to be one heck of a crazy skunk video because I'm not looking forward to the ride back in. It was horrible coming out here. It's, these conditions are horrible. Should not be out here right now. All right, that's the last time I'm going to say that. <laughs> I just need to make sure y'all know. We've made it to the second rig. Check this out. There it is right there. Uh, 50, approximately 51 feet of water. And I'm not really getting any real big fish marks. I do see stuff what reminds me of bait and the way a bait ball would look. Hopefully as I get closer towards these uh, pylons or the legs of this rig, uh, it'll be a little bit different. Man, oh man, these swells, there's something else. We got our first fish on, but guess what? He doesn't feel like a fighter. He's not like a, like a snapper style reef fish. So I'm thinking it's probably a gaff top or a hard head. How much y'all wanna make a bet? First fish of the day. Oh, look at that, a hard head. <laughs> Tell him what he's won, Bob. Oh my gosh. I'm ready whenever you are, brother. Uh, the, these conditions aren't liking my kayak too well, and that's what my video is gonna be about pretty much. Okay, ladies and gents, I really apologize for the, uh, the lack of fishing today. I'm just not able to do it inside this kayak. I'm taking some of the swells. If they get me broadside, they are dumping water inside the kayak. And if I'm facing straight into them, well, they crash over the bow. So it's not good either which way we look at it. Uh, so we got a skunk, but I'm glad I at least tested the limits. I'm glad that I decided to test the limits uh, of the kayak and now I can definitively tell y'all 
that it is not an offshore kayak. Let's restate that. It is not an offshore kayak in two and a half plus higher swells with 10 to 14 mile an hour winds. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna button everything up because we're gonna head back in and just salvage what's left of this day. I don't know if I've ever been more happy to say something like this, but I am glad to be back on land. It was a bit sketchy for the 2019 Outback. It's definitely not designed to do this style of fishing. If you have one and you want to bring it offshore, by all means do it. But don't say I didn't tell you so. Call me what you want, but it is not suited for this. So today's conditions, we had winds that were 10 miles an hour sustained on up to 15 mile an hour max and that's what we were dealing with today and i'm just saying if it's glass like during the summertime by all means go uh, but i will never do something like this again inside my outback we've got all the salt washed off and she's put away for the evening uh, i want to thank each and every one of you all for watching and uh I hope that y'all don't take this video the wrong way. Uh, as I said earlier, I am a Hobie lover, more so the Outback. I absolutely love what this kayak can do, but she's just not uh, capable of handling the swells in that rough water whenever the winds are high here on the Texas coast. So hopefully your experience is, if you decide to go offshore, is gonna be a lot better than what mine is, but the proof's in the pudding and uh, yeah, this guy will not do it again unless it's actually calm out there. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, tight lines, everyone.